I got a question for you. Have you all heard of this new extreme sport that's called G-Train? Whatever they're following, it must be fun. Trampolining is a wildly misunderstood sport. Warning about the risks of trampoline parks. Important GMA parenting alert about trampoline. I mean, at first I was just jumping. One mom's warning about the risks of a trampoline. Then, but then you started bouncing. We as parents need to be aware they're not safe. The injuries they can cause are life-altering. Is this sport really as dangerous as people say it is? What kind of a risk are our parents taking by taking their children to trampoline parks? At the apex of each bounce, there is a moment. Broken necks. Outside of time. Broken backs. Outside of words. Dislocated and open fractured elbows. Outside of everything. They're all... A perfect moment. Catastrophic injuries. Well, they're, they're risking death. But it's more fun learning and actually participating in the relatively new American sport of trampoline. Over the last 10 years, trampolining has seen one of its largest booms in growth since it officially became a sport in 1962. An increase in accessibility and growth through social media is one of the main factors for this. However, it has not come without its problems. To properly understand this story, we've got to go way back to... Today, George Nissen, designer of the trampoline from the University of Iowa, will demonstrate the trampoline. Originally, trampolining was not seen as a sport, but more of a device for training pilots. However, that all changed in 1964 when the first ever trampoline world championships were held, right here in London. Trampolining was officially a sport, it had been recognised by the Federation of International Gymnastics. It was now a gymnastics discipline. The sport progressed steadily after the first World Championships. By the year 2000, trampolining would be seen in the Olympics for the very first time. It would be the year 2000 before, before you get that. And of course that's just like saying give up. After waiting 64 years and committing his whole life to getting trampolining in the Olympics, George Nissen completed his dream. This was a monumental moment for the sport. But to come second to him and present to the world trampoline in that way, I'm going to take that every day of the year. With the Olympics casting a spotlight onto the sport and trampolines bouncing into the mainstream, it seemed like it was smooth sailing from here on. But what would happen to trampolining in the mid to early 2000s would redefine the sport forever. Garden trampolines. Garden trampolines became extremely popular at the start of the 21st century and became a staple toy for anyone's back garden. So a garden trampoline is probably the first thing that comes to your head when you think trampoline. And it's probably where your trampoline experience begun and ended. Now these were obviously totally different to any of the trampolines that we'd seen up until this point, and they weren't designed to do flips on whatsoever. However, the principles behind it are exactly the same. The metal springs create the bouncing force, and the mat flexes to absorb the previous bounce and maintain your momentum. The big difference, however, is in the jumping bed slash mat. We call it mat, the jumping bed, whatever you want, you know what I mean, the floor. Put simply, the holes in the jumping bed of the Olympic trampolines are much bigger, and they let through a lot more air than the garden trampolines do. This reduces wind resistance when they compress and therefore lets you jump higher. Honestly, I might sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. I asked ChatGPT to explain all of this. Did you? Yeah. I can't even read. I'm just hoping I'm saying what's on the script. So on the surface, these garden trampolines were simply just a gimmick, a tool for parents to let their kids go outside and let loose all their built up energy. And the parents can then go off to the pub and have a drink. But with trampolines, there was more than meets the eye and only a very small group of people could see it. 2008 would see a few very impactful videos uploaded to YouTube. This would be the first time we would see what is now known as freestyle trampolining in its earliest form. These videos were compilations mostly of young freestyle skiers and snowboarders training their skills on their garden trampolines during the summer. There was one thing about these videos that really stood out. It was a very new technique that you wouldn't see in gymnastics or traditional trampoline. And I guarantee if any of you have ever set foot on a trampoline, you will have experienced it, whether on purpose or not. To many, double bouncing is seen as this highly dangerous accident which just happens randomly when you're jumping. But these kids had discovered a way to use double bounce in a controlled and safe manner. This allowed them to get a crazy amount of height for such an average trampoline. So they would do this by having two people instead of just one person on the trampoline and maintaining perfect timing. If double bounce correctly, this can be absorbed by the bouncer, allowing them to get an amazing amount of height. And with a lot of practice, they won't be thrown off to the side like this clip right here. And the kids didn't know it at the time, but they were actually laying the foundations for a brand new extreme sport.
The progression was very slow in the early years, but in 2012 that would all change. A group by the name of Rap Boys would come along and put this sport on the map. It's time to play epic or fail. Let's see. Could possibly happen. Using their traditional gymnastic skills on the garden trampoline, combined with the double bounce, allowed them to do some of the best tricks we'd seen yet. The most notable of these tricks was done by Rasmus Bogvard. On the 28th of August 2013, he landed the first ever quadruple backflip on a garden trampoline. This is still to this day one of the most groundbreaking and influential tricks ever done in the sport of freestyle trampoline. Just to try and put into perspective how ahead of its time this was, this trick wasn't done again for another three years. And Rap Boys as a whole, with their viral trampolining videos, were proof that this sport had limitless potential. The mid to late 2010s were seen as the golden years for the sport. The unfathomable growth of YouTuber Tanner Bronga in 2016 saw the sport almost become mainstream. And thanks to Tanner and his YouTube videos with like challenges, game of tramps and all these things, the sport was growing rapidly and with a tight knit community found on Instagram. Athletes were pushing the skill level to brand new extremes and it was nothing like we'd ever seen before. Quad flips were becoming the norm. I don't know about you guys, but Tanner Brongart got me into trampolining. Like, he was the reason I started. I also feel like Tanner Brongart kind of, in a way, invented the idea of a meetup. His Midwest meetups back in the day was something everyone in the community would watch religiously. We'd always enjoyed flips in general, just messing about on the trampoline. Um, me and Louis both did scootering, and we could both backflip on a scooter. But before Tanner came around, we didn't really know that there was a way you could do that without going the traditional route. All three of us tried the traditional trampolining route, but it really was not for us. We couldn't progress our own speed or do the flips that we wanted to do and we finally had a way of doing our trampolining at our own pace. Freestyle trampolining at this point had well and truly been born. Some of the most notable tricks around this time was quintuple front flip on G-Tramp by the Flip King. This was the first ever quintuple flip on a G-Tramp. Then we had the first quintuple backflip on garden trampoline done by Derek Merkel. This was with double bounce but Again, way ahead of its time. One, two, three, four and backflips by Cam Shorey was also a ridiculous trick done at the time, which broke everybody's minds. You can just see in this clip the reaction, the people just going nuts. It shows how passionate everyone is about the sport and getting new worlds first. Dude, there is no way that just happened. Also around this time was the birth of one of the greatest meetups the community had ever seen. I'm at Colby Iverson's meetup and it's called the Great Lakes Meetup. I literally remember sitting at home with these guys and everyone in the UK just waiting for them to post up what they had done that day and the most insane tricks were done. Colby Iverson who hosted the meetup. Pretty much every world's first on gun trampoline yeah. was done by this man. At this point Colby Iverson had absolutely stormed ahead in the sport and was easily the best in the world or one of the best in the world. Doing the world's first quad backflip times two which is just unfathomable still to this day. Let's go, go. Colby was a great role model for the sport and his Great Lakes meetup had sort of taken over from the Midwest meetup at this point as the staple trampolining event of the year where all the best tricks were thrown down. He even managed to get on national TV on the Steve Harvey show. Folks, give it up for Colby! So 2019 was probably the peak of its uh, rapid growth as a sport. So as you may have seen in some of those clips, freestyle athletes had now found their way onto super trampolines. Now you may be wondering what the key differences are between freestyle and traditional trampoline. Well, it's pretty simple and it's just rules. Traditional trampolining has an almost endless list of rules that you have to stick to when competing. You've got to have your pointed toes, your perfect form, and for many people, this just wasn't the way they wanted to do the sport. So in freestyle trampolining, there's none of that. There's basically no rules. You can do any type of trick you want, land on any body part you want, whereas in traditional trampolining you have to take off and land on your feet. The sport was properly solidified at this point and it seemed as though the growth would never stop. They call it trampolining. Warning about the risks of trampoline parks, parks very popular with families. The boom of the trampoline park industry was a great success for accessibility to trampolines. Absolutely everyone could have an experience jumping on a trampoline. However, the American media quickly picks up on a common theme that was popping up in these parks. You're risking injury. You're yeah. risking You're death. signing it all away. It's either broken or dislocated and you can't move it at all. Severe injuries were starting to happen a lot more frequently. Multi-million dollar lawsuits were literally being filed against these trampoline parks. Attorney David Chazen has more than 50 clients, he says, have been severely injured while jumping at trampoline parks. A very small amount of trampoline parks were skipping over safety rules, cutting corners to save money, 
money and it was hurting the sport as a whole. The media were using this as fuel to push the sport down and scare parents into getting rid of their trampolines, stopping their kids from going to trampoline parks. Oh my god, that's a photograph of my daughter and she's trampolining! And unfortunately our up and coming sport got caught in the crossfire and was very very badly affected by this press. This divided not only people in the freestyle community but those in the traditional community as well. The traditional trampolinists saw the injuries that were happening in these trampoline parks and associated it with our sport. These are injuries that seem like military grade. They're all catastrophic injuries. We were seen as reckless, stupid kids. Everybody in the gymnastics community calls them death marks. All of the years of training by these dedicated freestyle athletes was being undermined by a few bad eggs. Now trampolining, like any extreme sport, is dangerous. We're not going to deny that. But these dangers increase exponentially when you chuck a bunch of hyperactive kids into a giant trampoline park. You know, I don't think it's really a great idea to put a bunch of trampolines in one area and play sports on them, but that's okay. But us in our gardens, there's one of us on the trampoline, maybe a couple to double bounce, there's a safety net, we're not jumping over them, crashing into little Fortnite children. Double bounce does increase the risk of injury, but only if used incorrectly. None of this, however, would stop the mainstream media from attacking the sport. The negative reports continued to flood in and the reputation of the sport began to crumble. The once exploding freestyle phenomenon was now back to a small micro community. For many, 2020 would be the year they hung up their springs. You know, like when you hang up your boots yeah. and you retire. But we were not going to let this be the end for our sport. From the very beginning, freestyle trampoline had always been niche. And the seed of this sport as a whole came from a point of rebellion, trying to break free from the restraints of traditional trampolining. These kids did not want to be defined by gymnastics' strict rules and need for absolute perfection. These kids just wanted to express themselves in their own way, at their own pace, and in their own sport. No amount of setbacks or obstacles would stop us from doing the sport that we love and pushing it as far as it could possibly go. Post-COVID, the skill level of the sport continued to grow and momentum picked back up again. In Europe, we gained access to the Eurotramp Freestyle, a trampoline built for freestyle skiers to train their tricks on in off-season, but it just so happened to be perfect for freestyle trampoliners like us. This ended up being the perfect trampoline to push the growth of the sport. The sheer size of the thing allowed more double bouncers to get on and ping us up even higher than we've ever imagined. The level of tricks had reached an all-time high. And on this trampoline, Ernest here broke the world record of flips twice. Two years in a row. The two Swiss Robins came onto the scene. Robin Hager and Robin Steiner were some of the most mind-bending tricks done to date. Quick special mention to this trick done by Robin Steiner. Nuts. Not to mention Sebi Wenbaum, who has been an absolute veteran of the sport, and he's always been top of the game, throwing some of the most mind-bending tricks. Just like Rasmus Bogvard way back in the day, both Robin Hager and Sebi Wenmau are traditional gymnasts who came over to the freestyle world and used their ability to throw some insane tricks. We're now at the point where sextuple flips are being done fairly regularly on Super Trampoline, with some almost being landed. Oh, that looks good. Oh! Quintuples are now almost the norm on garden trampoline with quintuple front flips, back flips, kabooms, all being done. This rapid growth seems to be starting up again. So all of that begs the question, how far will this sport go? In 2022, we had the first ever freestyle trampoline world championships. But these two competed in. I'm so, I'm so excited, this whole event's gonna be so fun. We also saw the first ever double bounce competition in Slovenia. That event was nuts. You probably would have seen the clips from it. Viral content coming back. Where will it stop? And how long till we see it in the X Games or even the Olympics? Honestly, there has never been a better time to start trampolining. We would have hit it by now. Yeah, we would have hit it. I hope so. Thank if, you for a million subscribers. If not, thank you for a million subscribers. We love you.